In Excel 2013, I have sales orders in a table. I'd like to create a pivot table from this data and be able to see summaries such as the total quantity that I sold or the total dollar value. And I'd also like to be able to see a distinct count or a unique count for the number of stores that were in each region or that sold something on a particular date. If I build the pivot table using the normal pivot table tool in Excel, I'm not going to have that feature available, but I can use the power pivot add-in and that will let me create a distinct count. So I'm going to close this data and use a different file to build a pivot table from this data. First, I'll pull the data using power pivot. So on the ribbon, Here's the Power Pivot tab, and I'll click Manage, and that will open the Power Pivot window. And in here, there are options for getting external data, and I'm using an Excel file, so I'll click From Other Sources. And this window shows all the relational databases, and I'll scroll down, and at the bottom, Text Files, and there's Excel, so I'll click that and click Next. And in this window, I'll leave Excel as the name here, and I'm going to select the file that has the data that we were just looking at. So I'll click Browse, and here's my file with store sales. So I'll click Open, and I want to use the first row as headers. So put a check mark there, click Next, and my data is on Sheet 1. So I'll put a check mark there, and instead of leaving Sheet 1 as the friendly name, I could change that to something else, but I'll leave that and click Finish. It was successful in pulling the data, so I'll click Close. And now you can see all that data on the Power Pivot sheet. The next step is to create a pivot table from this data. So within this Power Pivot window, I'm going to click Pivot Table. This dialog box is very similar to what you'd see when creating a regular pivot table. I'll put it on the existing sheet and click OK. And there's the pivot table. To see the fields, I'll click this triangle and I'll put order date into the filters. And then I'll select region, city, and store. And I'd like to see the total sales. So I'll click total price. And there's the total amount sold at each store, each city, and each region. To get a distinct count, I'm going to have to create another field. So with the cell selected in the pivot table, I'm on the Power Pivot ribbon, and I'll click Calculated Fields, New Calculated Field. And this window opens up, and it gives a generic name, Calculated Field, and I'll call this Distinct Stores. For the formula, the equal sign is there already, and there is a function wizard if you need help selecting a function. I know that I want to use the distinct count function, so I'll type that. As you start typing, you should see a drop down with any names that match what you've typed, so I can double click on distinct count now, and that puts it into the formula. And now I want it to give me a distinct count of the stores. So I'm going to type a square bracket, and that opens up another drop down and shows all the field names. So I'll double click on store, closing round bracket. I could also format the number, so instead of general, I can select number, zero decimals, and use a thousand separator, then click OK, and there's the distinct count. So for this region, there are three distinct stores. So there's one, two, and three, and in the west region, there are two, and you can see the store numbers there. And if we change the date, so if I pick, instead of showing all the dates, choose this date, the numbers change. There were three distinct stores selling on that date in the East region, but only one in the West. So use the distinct count function in Power Pivot to create a distinct count for any of the fields. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file for this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.